Greetings and welcome to another edition of Psychedelic Television. I'm your host and humble narrator, Shadow. Um, I'm glad to have you back again this week. It's always uh, a pleasure to spend time with you um, while you peruse your computing device. Um, this week we have another another fun lineup of news events and entertainment in the psychedelic world. We also have some music by a friend of mine uh, that goes by the name Brian Enoch. Uh, he's a great, great dude and I love him a lot. So I wanted to play a few of his original tracks that off his SoundCloud and I'll be promoting that uh, later in the show. Uh, first of all, let's get to Let's get to some news here. And as always, I like when, I don't think I have my Twitter turned on. So I I put this up for, you know, I, I have my Twitter feed on for the whole show. And uh, <laughs> I, I like when people tweet in to me uh, with suggestions or, um, Last week, a friend of mine had a, an idea for a, a positive story, so that's going to be included in our news. S so just keep in mind that I definitely take your, your thoughts and ideas into consideration, and I implement them into the show. And that's a big part of what this show is, is I want to promote my friends. I want to promote uh, particularly the local psychedelic community, and this is a fun avenue for me. It, it can be a lot of work. Uh, it, I seem to run into gremlins a lot. There's l everything has to go in a certain order, and it can it can be complicated. You know, obviously today I didn't start exactly at nine. Uh, <laughs> that's just kind of the way it goes, though. So I, I was watching one. Of my, I think it was my first episode, and it's amazing how how much more animated I was with my hands and. Probably because I had to wing the whole show, and you you had to sit there and just listen to me talk for God who knows it seems like I just went on and on, but it it, it was a lot of it's actually kind of funny to go back and and trace how you're doing. One one of the things I've been listening to a lot is my conversational pauses. Um, yeah, there there's one right there. So I I want to present I want to present the news to you in a way that I'm not sitting there stuttering the whole time, you know? So anyway, I, I did turn the Twitter on, and uh, get I'm trying to promote myself here, yo. All righty. So first and foremost, this, I, if you know me, you know I have a thing for vets. I think they're the, the sacrifice that they make for this country. A lot of them, you know, there's different reasons for getting into the military. Some people honestly really want to do, they want to serve their country. They want to serve each other. And so I, I, I just don't understand when our federal government cuts their benefits or makes sets up additional roadblocks and bureaucracy in between them getting the medicine they need. You know, if anything, not that we should be constantly going completely out of our way, but if it's rational things that help the vets, I don't, I, I just don't understand why we would set up hurdles to keep them from getting, I mean, this l just recently, uh, veterans went in front of the White House and dropped hundreds of their empty pill bottles as a as a statement of saying, and this p was particularly for marijuana. They, they want the VA to give them access to, for doctors in the VA system, because a lot of veterans have to go through the VA system in order to get their care. You know, otherwise they have to go through their own health insurance or whatever. So uh, that's one of the, what I think is the benefits of being a vet is you should, you know, if you get hurt serving your country or y even just get hurt in your life, you should still, the government should take care of you. You gave them a lot of service. They should at least take care of you. And so this was more of like a statement of saying, look at all this shit we wouldn't have, 
you know, that we'd have to take. Marijuana, like, would get rid of most of that. And, and it's just recently that we've even had that legislation. Let me see what it's called. It's called the, the Veterans Equal Access Amendment. And it's getting pushed through Congress right now. And it wants to allow doctors to provide recommendations um, in states that participate in medical marijuana. And there's no reason they shouldn't be. And the VA is one of the, the last organizations that had been holding out. And as far as I know, uh, I covered last week that there's even some progress being made there. So we'll, we'll have to see how that goes. And, but yeah, I thought this was a cool, is cool imagery for one. And it, it's a really good statement for what my show is about. You know, I'm, I'm trying to promote this stuff. Um, and, and here's one of the, the articles my friend Jason shared. It's, it was that when the little uh, Twitter propped up and he said, hey, here's a positive news story. So I, I went and checked it out. And so basically, there's been, uh, let's see, the Journal of Pharma, Pharma, Psychopharmacology has found that there's three particular psychedelics that they, they studied. Uh, that they have found no significant associations between a lifetime of use of psychedelics and increased likelihood of past year s serious psychological distress, mental health treatment, suicidal thoughts, suicidal plans, and suicide attempt, depression, and anxiety. There's not a correlation there. It, it do, they've been studying these for quite some time. Uh, th those few are the ones that um, we've probably had the most time to, you know, LSD's been around since the early 40s. Mushrooms have been around even <laughs> before that, but not seriously researched in this country until, uh, I believe, Wasson uh, down in Mexico. Um, yeah, and mescaline has been around for quite some time, you know, even longer than LSD, I believe. And so there's, they're starting to show that not only are these drugs not harmful, they actually improve mental health. And that's a big push of what I've been wanting to promote with this show is these things are, they have not only legitimate uses, I think they can enhance your life in certain ways if used properly and with um, the proper education and discretion. Th there's no reason a grown adult can't use these things. And, and I think it's a lot of the way we handle uh, psychedelics in this country is kind of silly. You know, I can, go into a, I can go into a place and buy alcohol and oftentimes they don't card me. So but if I go to the recreational store, I have to show my ID when I walk into the door and then I have to show my ID at the counter again. It's like, how do you, how do you think I got in here? I realize they're trying to follow the rules and hopefully it'll loosen up at some point. It's just when you go to a place like Amsterdam and you can hit a little button and the counter lights up and y you basically choose what you want and then you sit there, at you either can sit there at the counter, there's a place to roll it up. Uh, there's papers, free papers that you can just sit and hang around and roll a spliff if you want. Or you can eat a little space cake and then and then leave, save some for later. You don't have to be like, oh, I opened my marijuana in public. Now I have to, you know, it's just kind of, I, I think the United States could do a lot better. I'm getting kind of off track of, of the actual news story. Susan likes to laugh when I do that. So Arrowhead kind of pops up on my timeline. I, I was working on it earlier today, people, that um, to not just have everything. But I like Arrowhead. I like Arrowhead, so I left it, but I was trying to just get it so if you mentioned me, it would pop up. It just, it wasn't working for me. So it, just anything that's on my timeline is what shows up. So this really doesn't have anything. Well, Arrowhead always has something to do with psychedelics, so. Now, related to, whoops. Uh, this is another story that uh, my friend Aaron shared via private message on Facebook and and I I'm gonna I haven't watched the whole film yet it's a it's a documentary um, about the science of psilocybin trying to provide a new understand it's called a new understanding the science of psilocybin you can you can she shared a YouTube li link with me so it it doesn't cost anything as far as I know and uh, it, you can also go if you want to go and, and 
actually see the site here. I, I put the link up there. You can go check out the site. I, I, from what I've been able to gather so far, it looks like a really great documentary. I've only started to watch it. I'm probably going to watch some more tonight when I get done with the show. It just, it looks really, it seems like a lot of information is being presented in a way that if, if you want to understand mushrooms and how, how they're currently being researched and, and, and used, uh, this will give you a really great overview of that. And yeah, like I said, if, if you, if you provide ideas or uh, tweet in something, I'll, I'll do my best to get it on in a future episode. So check it out. Um, let's see. Oh, this is an interesting one. So on the normal website, this, this kind of surprised me. I, I don't know why it surprised me. It shouldn't. But over 12% of federal inmates in are serving time for marijuana offenses nonviolent marijuana offenses. Yay, I made it and I have you on X on the X bone. <laughs> no, it's the Xbox one, right? Sweet, dude. Yeah, there over 12% of federal prisoners are in there for nonviolent things. So imagine that a lot of these people are in there for states that just still have not gotten their heads around uh, legalizing a plant that's been around for since bef BC China. Yeah. It's just kind of silly. Those are, that's, just think about all, that's a, a whole bunch of people that can be contributing to society, having jobs. You know, people, I understand some of these are probably some, some pretty large scale Occasionally marijuana. I mean, you don't just go to federal prison for a joint, usually. Not not in today's society. Tim Leary did for a couple joints, you know. But um, in today's society, usually you have to be trafficking a, a pretty decent amount. It depends on the state. Some states are super ass backwards. You don't even want to get caught with seeds and stems in a couple of the states that I've lived in. So uh, it's scary. I don't. I don't like having to fear the police. I don't think that's, I don't think that's useful to me, you know, cause, causing fear and panic in people. It's a great way to, I guess, control people. It makes, makes them unhappy. I mean, there's a reason I don't like living in Wyoming. It didn't, it didn't make me very happy. But for some people, you know, maybe it was just Cheyenne, you know, I don't know. Georgia wasn't very fun either, as far as Their drug laws weren't very liberal or lean. They don't lenient, I guess is the word. I'm going to get some of this shit off of here. Let's see. That's not shit. <laughs> uh but to segue out of that, I mean, I, I mentioned normal. And that's where I actually I find I've been supporting normal as long as as long as I can remember, um, I've always been fond of these guys because they, they're the ones that are kind of the, the lobbyists for getting some common sense in our uh, marijuana policies. And th they're the ones out there on the front lines actually doing, doing the work. Uh, they represent businesses and lawyers and doctors and actual sane, rational human beings. There's no Ben Carsons, you know. <laughs> so I, I often often uh, put up the, the link to MAPS. And this week I thought I'd put up Normal. It's another organization that I, I, I support, that I think is great. And they're, they're on par with a lot of things MAPS is doing. And you can go, you can go on the Normal website. You can learn a lot about uh, what's going on in, in the various states with marijuana legislation. You can, there's, they make it really easy for you. T they provide forms, uh, ways, to, links to contact your representatives. Um, you have blank forms that you can use and use as a template to, to mail to your, to your congressperson. Uh, there's a lot of great information and tools there for you. So I definitely, I definitely recommend you at least go check it, check them out. I have the link there to their actual support page 
Um, you can just go to normal.org and there's all kinds of other links too that are very interesting. So I highly recommend if, if you've never checked it out. I think I'm kind of preaching to the choir here for most of my friends. But So that's that wraps up the news. Um, I think uh, I kind of feel thirsty. <laughs> Susan, I, I can hear her snickering. Dun, dun, dun. <laughs> mm. The stuff just needs to not be so tasty. That's damn fine ale. <laughs> What's that, hun? Uh oh. So uh, yeah, yeah. She thinks they're gonna start just giving it to me at some point. I don't think so, but let's get some. Oh yeah. So I think this is the time that we're gonna kind of segue into the first song of the evening. Now this guy, I've known him. I think I've known him pr since about. 2010 or so, maybe 2009. Uh, I I went to hi him and uh, Osiris Indria uh, do an event called Hotwired. At least that was kind of one of my introductions to them. Is they've been doing this off and on for years. Uh, and one of the events I'm going to talk about in the event section is a Hotwired event. And lately we they just do one-offs and just kind of special events. And this one is definitely special. That's coming up. But I, I really enjoyed uh, both these guys getting to meet them. And I've especially grown close to Brian. I think he's just a totally genuine, down-to-earth, awesome guy. And so I wanted to play a few of his, you know, I have to I have to only kind of play original music. I he, he does an amazing job at DJing and remixing and stuff. So unfortunately, I'd, YouTube would g shut me down, I think, or give me weird like country blocks and shit so this first one let me get it kind of queued up here well it's queued up but i have to kind of switch machines and shit <coughs> all right so this first track and i think this is one he's he's still uh, still working on, but um, he's got it on his SoundCloud, and I wanted to share it. I'll have links up to his SoundCloud as well. And his name is Brian Enoch. I I have it in the SoundCloud link, so you you'll be able to see that. But I I've just been putting the song titles lately, just because it. I don't know. I I think it's more important to have a link there so that pe you know viewers can go and check out other tracks if they want. Whoa. <laughs> Man, I'm smooth. This one, this one's called Shamanism for Dummies. I'm gonna leave you for now, but I'll be back.
reality is both subjective and malleable. If you can dream a better world, you can make a better world. All right, that was Shamanism for Dummies by the the always awesome Brian Enoch. Look at that bright green. Oh, there we go. <laughs> so yeah, that was, I like that as a nice, I, I want to start with uh, a little bit of music to keep the pep going a little bit. So cause sometimes I tra I'll trail off and uh, kind of have to, get back on board again so i believe after the first song honey is it the pot segment or is it the event yeah i think i need to get stoned so i can talk about the events right <laughs> so you can't you guys can't hear but off off camera i have my the lovely Susie sue and she's pretty fantastic she kind of monitors the show and make sure we're getting sound and all that good stuff that there's actual visuals going out to you people because usually i'm sitting here scrambling last minute <laughs> after the first show the first show she wanted to get um dry erase so she can kind of sit there and hold it up and then i would have to look over and be like huh, what I wasn't too keen on that idea, but it's, it's hard enough to remember to look into the camera for me. Uh-oh. Brian Enoch's on board. Oh, uh, yeah. That guy's awesome. So, yeah. Let's smoke some marijuana. So I, I like the name of this this particular kind of pot they call it atf and that's kind of the the more family friend friendly way of referring to it <laughs> it's alaskan thunderfuck and it's a it's a nice heavy sativa it's high on the happy very high on the happy it's high on the energetic it's not so good on the relax. Well, it's still relaxing. It's not an indica by any means. It's a sativa. And I want energetic. I looked at the side effects of it. I think it says it tends to cause a little more dry mouth. Uh, I don't have it up here. Shit. Well, I had the... I kind of gave you most of the gist. I think it it might cause dryness in the mouth and the eyes. Those those were the t the top two negative effects i don't notice i'm kind of used to i don't smoke a lot but i'm used to pot and it doesn't it doesn't make my well we'll see i'm gonna smoke it and then if i'm you know chewing on the cotton later on we'll know 
I, I can't have another Manny segment. I mean, I, c I can sit and drink it. <laughs> Manny's. So, the I think the picture behind me is a little prettier than what I have. Obviously, the oh no, there's there's quite a bit of nice orange hairs on there. I got this down. I'm pretty broke right now, so I I just buy like a gram here and there, especially for the show days. I don't know. I like smoking pot on the air. It's one of the things I enjoy about this show. And then I was thinking, am I gonna have to start cutting things like not doing the pot segment or what? But I've already loaded a little bit and. The stuff is good. I, I recommend it. It's not very expensive either as far as the recreational varieties go. Uh oh, it looks like my laptop froze. So, what I'm going to do. Is kind of take another hit and reboot this thing. Because <laughs> it's not like I can just take another. Well, I could. Oh, I can't do it when the music's playing. I can do, yeah, I can do the events without it, but it'd be nice to uh, reboot it. This poor computer, I mean, it's a 2009. I, I have trouble believing something that, granted, that's going six years old now. You know, that's that's insane. It, uh... I don't know. It was top of the line at the time. But th they don't even make 17-inch MacBook Pros anymore. And uh, I, I've been trying, trying to, trying to hold, to hold on, hold on to this thing as long as like. Hello. Oh shit. Yikes. <laughs> yeah, that was probably my computer booting up. All right. Yeah. We'll see if it crashes during the visuals in the next. This is definitely a, a friend. And I went to Monster Planet last night, and my friend Chris Chris was talking about that it's kind of like shitty at public access, but in the best possible way. <laughs> I think it's funny because it, it's kind of true. I don't think I'm like God. You know, there there was some. I've seen some people that get right up into the camera and it's all on video camera and super shaky and uh <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> if it was Windows M E, you'd be smoking into <laughs> For a second, I thought you were talking shit about Mac, but then I realized you use Mac as far as I know. Or you probably use both, but... It's like, Windows ME, are you trying to tell me that... No. Because everyone knows Windows ME sucks. Yes, Monster Planet! Yes. <laughs> yeah, Monster Planet rocks. I, I hadn't ever gone out. I'd... I'd seen it. It's really hard for me to get out on Mondays because I'm just fucking lazy as shit. And then but we decided, I, I, because I like the guy that does visuals and I like Chris, I was I was like, fuck, I, I'm going to go check it out. Why not? And I, I just happened to have a drink ticket that I didn't use at the last, <laughs> for some event I'd done at Rebar. So it really didn't cost me anything. Yeah, Monster Planet is free if anyone... It's free. It's oh yeah, is Susan enjoyed it too quite a bit. Or no, it's Susie Sue. Sorry. 
All right, I'm going to refresh the Twitter here. Okay, it's back on. So yeah. I think I think I think th we are ready for events now, Susan. Oh yeah, Susie Sue. I need to drink more coffee. Yeah, if I get stone, I I, I looked at my first episode. I must have been stone out of my gourd just even doing the sh the show because it now i look it's like my eyes are barely open it looks like so i i'm working to actually stare at the camera a little more so yeah this is a, one of my my favorite uh segments is where we talk about upcoming events um so i this one's going to be at Rebar. It's with several people I really, really like, such as Mr. Dane Garfield Wilson and Adlib and Khadija Streets, Miss Shell Raka. And I forget, I can't see. <laughs> I don't have all of these up here. This is on. What do we got here? This is down at Rebar. It's my one of my favorite clubs. And then, oh, okay, the last one that I missed, I missed two guys. It says Burr, also known as Essence. So that was, that was who I missed. But I love these guys, and I'm probably going to go try to go check this out. Looks like the cover is 10, and it goes 10 p.m. to late, so that's, that's wicked. So I recommend checking that out. Now, the Dirty Ice Crew, these guys um, took over Cascade, the, the Cascadian team. I, I was kind of part of the shenanigans of this, but the, the totem animal, every, the different camps in Cascadia had uh, totem animals or kind of spirits or, uh, and I was told to get a bunch of like cougar and fire and stuff, you know, because that was the, it was fire cougars, fire mountain lions. And, but then there's this like ultra secret little thing. It's like, okay, we're gonna, we're gonna kind of take over and stage a coup of some sort, you know? And I was like, what, what's this gonna be? You know, it ended up being fucking hilarious. <laughs> and shit like that makes events a lot of fun. It made, it made my Cascadia more fun, you know? So I was glad to be a part of that. And I got to do all kinds of imagery. I love penguins. They're fucking hilarious to to watch. Now, I have this good friend named Max, and she's been a part of the the booty events, and I guess they're they're going to start doing it every Friday, or they already have. Um, I haven't been to a booty event in a bit, but they're very well attended. And uh, this is going to be at Barboza on November twentieth, and they're doing it every Friday apparently now. So. If you're into mashups, I, I kind of can get down with mashups. I like them sometimes, you know. Just depends if you're in that mood. And she's awesome, Max Destruct. I, I, d I think she's going to be playing. I'll pull this up and just to make sure. I don't want to be promoting things if I don't know jack shit about them. The thing is, sometimes I, I do a bunch of my shit on the last day or so. Yeah, it's going to be your booty resident DJs, Freddy, King of Pants, and Destruct. So, highly recommend that. It's free before 11.30. It's $5 after, so that's completely reasonable. It's the same night as the Dirty Ice Crew. So, But I believe it's not far. Let's see, what is Barboza? All right. And then we got now I'm I'm excited about this event because <coughs> I'm actually involved doing the visuals. Uh there's gonna be Deco. They they have a really awesome Deco artist coming in from New York. Uh the name was Nepheline Deco, I believe. Why is it not showing up on my 
probably because it's in December. December 4th at Rebar. Yeah, Nephilim. Nephil 9 Deco. Okay. After I completely murdered it. <laughs> now, there's there's some new developments on this is that uh, Luke Mandala came on board and he's wicked. I like his music a lot. So we got, it looks like in order of appearance, we got Luke Mandala uh, versus Brian Enoch. So the guy I just played tonight. Um, and then, of course, Perfect Stranger and Atmos, which I've been talking about this for two or three weeks now. And so I'm excited. I, I want to see how it's all going to come together. I need to meet with Brian and discuss sort of what, how the stage is going to be set up and not. Because I, it, but this is going to be awesome. Uh, these guys, either one of them on their own could headline uh, this show and people would come out. It's, it's It blows my mind that there's this much talent on this roster now. So I'm excited, very, very excited. Uh, limited, I believe the first tier pre-sales were down to not a whole lot. So you might want to get in there, get your tickets. They're 20 bucks. Uh, second tier... <laughs> Second tier pre-sales will be twenty-five. So save yourself five five bucks. You're gonna you're gonna want it. You're gonna you're gonna want to go to this. I guarantee it. So ah, uh, can't wait for that one. And then right around the corner, if if right at Cremwork, apparently Opulent Temple's having Naughty or Nice. So you could party hop if you want to. Some people aren't as big on at on progressive sci and different kinds of stuff. So I've worked with Opulent Temple a few times. Uh, I've worked at one of their white parties and did visuals also at a, I believe their Wonderland, one of their Wonderland parties. So they're great. So yeah, go, let me get you, who's gonna be at that one? What's that, hun? <laughs> yeah, I need to comment on that, let's see. Oh yeah. Yeah, so at this event we got Meet Katie, Billy Seal, Ian Powers, El Eliki, Elikai, uh, Foo Foo, and Chris Tower. So I'm probably gonna be busy over at Rebar, but this is just around the corner, so for people that wanna check that out, there it is. And then finally, this is a ways off, but I wanted to let everyone know uh, the tickets to Boom have gone on sale uh, as of November 11th, and I believe their first level have sold out. So they still have more. It doesn't seem like they're unreasonable. Um, it's going to be in Portugal, though, and it's in August. So I, I, I really want to go to this. So I need to get hustling and get some money going uh, because it's I don't know it, when it runs out that's a bummer you know perfect stranger is my spirit animal <laughs> what is the link that Brian shared hmm. I would have to log into my Twitter actual Twitter page but anyway dudes like Check, go to the boomfestival.org and look in the tickets. See if you, it's not that expensive if you get your tickets, you know, plane tickets and all that ahead of time far enough, um, which is, that's what I would do. That's what I'm going to try to do. I just happen to be kind of trying to start my own businesses and shit. So I don't have a lot of money. So I'm trying to figure it out or doing my best. So w I believe that is the last event. Uh, now we can get to some music, right? Yeah. Yo. So I want to, I want to know what Brian's link was. Oh. Yeah. Susie's gonna try to look it up and see. Okay. So for the next, we have one more song, and then we're gonna be out of here for the night. Now I like, I really like this one because it's a little more mellow. I wanted to start a little f with a little faster one. Uh, 
this one just is nice and relaxing and it just seems like a nice soothing way to segue out so it's called gold bath i think he's had it up for a bit All right. Thank you. 
All right. That song is very, I feel very relaxed now. How are you guys feeling? You feeling relaxed? <sighs> yeah, that is a sweet track, isn't it? And I'm back here. Ta-da! So yeah, I totally recommend going and checking Brian's other stuff out, his other mixes and things that I couldn't share. As I said earlier, he's a wicked DJ. I just love his style. Uh, he has impeccable taste. And I, I wish I could play, you know, more of his stuff. And I, I'm working, I'm working on a special little project with him down the road. So uh, this is not going to be the last time you s you see his music, hopefully. And um, I'm excited for the future. The future is awesome, and I want to share it with you guys. Well, we're going to share it. We don't have a whole lot of choice, or we can not. But I'd rather share it with you as much as we can. And that about wraps up our uh, broadcasting day. Join us every Tuesday night at 9 p.m. Pacific, where we're going to do something similar. You know, I, I like to throw things around, shake it up a little bit. So we'll see. Last week we did a chill session. And, uh, you know, that last song there it left me very chill. You know, Brian also plays a lot of great chill music and chill, more down tempo sets. So, yeah, I, I feel like I'm ready. So let's do this. You have a great week, and I'll sign off now. <laughs> oh, first I got to get some of this stuff off here. <laughs> Bye, Duder.